We are getting a supper going. It was a little lighter than I hoped, but um, I'm hoping that it will just be done in time. So I've got two decent sized roasts here. This was right over three pounds. And all you're gonna need for this three packet roast is a packet of all jus, packet of brown gravy, and a packet of dry ranch, some butter, and some water. I have a whole recipe typed out and I'll have it linked down below for you guys so y'all can see it if you're interested. But I'm gonna go ahead and just dump all three of these packets on top of here, put the water, and then add the stick of butter on top and get it going. So I've got the au jus. Brown gravy. And the ranch. And then you're going to pour one cup of water. Try to do it around the roast because you want that seasoning to stay on top. And then you're going to add in a half or anywhere from a half a stick to a whole stick. The recipe calls for a whole stick, but I'm just going to use what I've got right here. And that is it. Put the lid on it. Set it on low for 8 to 10 hours or high for four to six. Whatever, however much time you got, let it cook. So to go along with our roast tonight, I want to do some smashed potatoes and I'm doing them in the crock pot. So for the smashed potatoes, you want to make sure that the skins are nice and clean because you're leaving the peeling on, but you can peel them, of course, if you want. Um, I just, the, for the red skin, I like to do the smashed because it's really good nutrition and Luke likes them as well. So for these, we're going to just cube these up nice and even, and then um, we will put them in our uh, crock pot. And of course, if there's any bad spots, we will, you know, cut those out, but... So you're just going to cut these up and then we'll get them in there. Okay, so we have added our water in. You wanna make sure that they're pretty good and covered in there because if they stick out and they don't get any, if they don't stay in the moisture, the water, then they'll turn brown. So you gotta make sure that they're covered in the water. So I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna break up one of these chicken cubes just to give it some flavor. And then that will dissolve as it heats up. And then I'm gonna go in with a good amount of salt, some pepper, and then I'm gonna add in a good tablespoon of minced garlic. And if you don't like minced garlic, you can just add the powder. This is just gonna kinda help give your potatoes some flavor as it's cooking, because you're slow cooking these. So you wanna make sure that they have flavor. So now we're just going to pop the lid on, and I'm gonna cook these on low since the roast is gonna take a while, but you can cook them on low or high, just however much time you have. You just wanna make sure that they are fork tender, nice and soft, and then you can drain it and add in some milk and some butter and some Add in some cream, add whatever you want to. 
and just mash them up and they are delicious mashed potatoes. Okay, so while the potatoes are draining, um, I've turned it on warm and I'm just going to add the milk directly in here. Just gonna add a little bit so you have enough to um, cream them together. But you all, whenever you're making mashed potatoes, you always want your, whatever dairy uh, or liquid you're adding to help cream them together, you always want that warm. Uh, it just makes such a smooth mashed potato. Now I am making smashed potatoes, but I always do this. Um, this is something that I learned in culinary school and even if I am making smashed potatoes so they're not going to be that smooth, I always warm my liquid up before. So I'm just going to put the lid on it for a second, kind of let that warm through. Then we'll add the potatoes directly in there and we will mix them up in there. So I just whipped them up till I got the consistency that I wanted. And then I'm just going to, I taste tested them to see if they needed more seasoning and they did. So I'm adding in some more salt and pepper. You always wanna taste your green beans, but they don't need much because I cooked them with salt, pepper, and garlic, so. Y'all, these are so smooth and creamy, like amazing. And I didn't have to do nothing. The crock pot cooked, my crock pots cooked all of our dinner tonight. That was it. I didn't have to stand over the stove and cook. It did it. It cooked my mashed potatoes and it cooked my lovely roast. That is what I call a win-win here in the Dean house. Now all you gotta do is top it with half a stick of butter. Put your lid on and I just keep it on warm until it is ready to serve. Oh, these are so good. Y'all, this was so freaking delicious. You definitely have to try this recipe. I will have it linked down below. So how I served it is I just opened up the biscuit, put some of the mashed potatoes down, and then put some of the roast down with the gravy. And oh my gosh, y'all, so good. Next up is the slow cooker French onion burgers, y'all. Oh my gosh. I have made these before, but this is kind of a different recipe. And I'm so glad I tried this recipe because this is a keeper. It is so delicious. So to start off, you're going to sear your burger patties. Um, just sear them good on both sides. So I'm just seasoning it up with that 1836 beef rub from Suckle Busters. Y'all know that link's always down below. So I'm just going to sear both sides well. And that's also going to help with the grease so you don't have as much grease in your crock pot while the other's cooking. So this kind of helps as well, but I wouldn't recommend cooking them all the way through. Just sear them. That way they get nice and juicy and tender in the slow cooker. So here is the recipe that I'm using. I will try to find it and have it linked down below for you guys. Um, and I'll also try to find the cookbook. Um, but I got this cookbook at a thrift store local to me and y'all, this was so good. <laughs> So I just used the French onion um, Campbell's and then you're just going to, like I said, serum on both sides. I did cut up an onion. The recipe itself didn't call for that onion. It just called for the soup mix and the burger patties, but I really liked that I added that extra onion in there. 
Of course, I didn't eat it, but Luke was able to have extra onions on his burger, and he said it was a really nice flavor. So once you get your patties seared off, you're just going to add a half of that French onion can in the bottom of your slow cooker, and then you're just going to put your patties down. Luckily, mine fit kind of perfect all in one level. If you have more, if you have a bigger family and make this and have to have like eight patties, I would definitely recommend using two cans. That way you have enough uh, soup to cover your burgers. Now this may seem weird, honestly, because you know it's a burger you're going to be putting it on a bun why are you having all that juice in there the liquid y'all it is so good the flavor as these are cooking slow cooking throughout the day the flavor you're getting from that french onion soup is amazing they these burgers were so juicy and tender it was th these were so good so you're just going to take the rest of that can and pour it on top and then like i said i added an extra onion um that's not what the recipe calls for but i'm definitely glad i did that and I just put that on top with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I just put the lid on it and let it slow cook all day. Of course, you can put it on low for uh, like seven to eight hours or put it on high for three to four. However much time you got, just let it go. But I feel like with a beef, like with roast and with burgers and like meatballs and stuff, the lower, slower, the better. So here it is what it looks like when it is all done. That was about the six hour mark. They were super tender. The onions were nice and cooked down. And then we just served them with these uh, potato buns. And I just toasted those in the oven. I put sprayed a little like Pam spray on them. And I just put them directly in the oven at 425. I didn't put them on a pan or anything. I just set them right on the, the racks. Let them kind of get toasty. And then we like Dukes. So I put some Dukes on there and then used provolone cheese and y'all this was so good i'm telling you <laughs> even winston and winston you know like a big burger sometimes can be intimidating but y'all y'all know how much he loves his cow meat he loved this Here is my plate. We just served it with some of those box Parmesan noodles. I made me some green beans. And then we tried a new to us side. We tried acorn squash and it wasn't my favorite. Luke liked it. I made it sweet because um, I thought that would be the best way for us. But it just had this weird aftertaste that I just didn't like. But anyways, this video is about Crock-Pot meals. So I hope you guys enjoyed these two Crock-Pot meals. I hope it gave you some inspiration. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.